Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. Hey, go. Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Putt. He's the man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe, from the weather and space. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome back to First Contact Radio. Let's uh, look at what we're dealing with today. Today is the 24th, right here. And today we have, well, we were at a void, of course, moon until 2.34 a.m. Pacific time, and then we went from Taurus into Gemini, where we are now. So our moon sign is in Gemini. Gemini is an air sign. The sun sign, Libra, is also a air sign. So we have two air signs, a lot of air, a lot of wind blowing around, wind. Wind is also words and actions, things that we say and we do. So we want to make sure that with the things that we're saying and that with things that we're doing, that we're not saying and doing things that hurt us. We want to make sure that we're doing things that are assisting us in what we're doing. So very important to look at the way we communicate Gemini and Libra, the way in which we seek out to find karmic balance in our life, or just balance in general. Karma takes care of its own. We have uh, a square coming up in just a little bit between Gemini, the moon sign, and right here, the sign, which is Neptune. All right, and so we have this square. Neptune is all about taking a new perspective on things. It's looking through the illusion of the watery world and and a square means there's a lesson there so there's a lesson for us with the way we communicate and the communication we get from the way in which we look at the world so it challenges us to look at it in another way you know there's a lot of stuff going on out there that's pretty crazy and intense we could look at it one way or we could you know change our perspective kind of like the way we're looking at the new earth as opposed to the old earth and the old ways, just where we want to put our perspective. So that's very important. So we got some sort of lesson coming up today in that regard. The moon phase is making its way down to a new moon. It's 73% of the way full. Mayan Oracle, we're on the third tone day, the third position of this wave spell of the wind inspiration. So today is called the three or electric seed guided by the star. The phrase is, I activate in order to target bonding awareness. I seal the input of flowering with the electric tone of service. I am guided by the power of elegance. Space weather, solar wind, 409.6 kilometers per second. Planetary K index, we're at a three at the moment, between a three and a three, so some activity has taken place. See our coronal hole right here, nice good one showing up. A few other ones here, remember they spew solar wind out into the cosmos and where it goes, well, if we're in the way, we get hit. And then of course we have M-class flare, same like the other day, geomagnetic storm activity low as well. Here's the report from Suspicious Observers for today. Good morning, folks. I've linked the latest blog entry from the CIOC. It details what you've seen many times on this channel and others, but if you haven't seen the viewing schedule for Comet Ison, just Google Stereo Ison. The first link that pops up is going to be the Stereo page detailing when this comet passes through all NASA satellite images. The only things not on there are the rover and Phobos location viewing schedules, which were both linked on the CIOC page along with many other sources. Bruce Gary has added the latest Whitmer image and data to his model. The comet appears a little bit brighter. FYI, the spaceweather.com gallery of amateur submissions stays in the link list. These aren't their images, folks. They're ours. 
It's a little comet, nothing else, but it's on a phenomenal trajectory with two celestial encounters and a path that will probably set debris in the path of Earth, as I've said. Three hours of ice on discussion on the website, guys, and much more in the private forum. Got three worthwhile articles to check out. First, hypersaline basins within water bodies have virtually no oxygen and a ton of salt, and yet they're able to detect life there. Speaking of life, this article might require a bit of a biofocus for comprehension, but the conclusions are interesting nonetheless. For those on the solar panel slash free energy train, how about a near 50% efficient solar cell? Very cool. This is one week of storms and rainfall across planet Earth. This is the rain accumulation via TRMM, just giving some perspective on what happens on the other side of our world. Top weather stories begin in New Zealand, where severe weather warnings were issued a few hours ago for the cell that is heading south from Vanuatu. Meanwhile, due north of that we see Paduk on a beeline for Japan. All models suggest it is about to jerk the wheel to the right. Total lack of solar flaring is belied by a disc chock full of spots. The big guy down south needs to learn he can't do it alone. The leading northern group is divided magnetically with no umbral mixing, but the trailing northern group is building a bipolar complexion at the leading north edge of that active region. Even though we've seen no flaring, it's tough to ever ignore a development like that, and we'll keep watch. The solar wind is just now beginning to show interplanetary shock. As it's beginning now, we'll diagnose Genesis tonight. But for now, just know the electrons are sensing the space weather. The next coronal hole is on the Earth-facing disk, and it is powerful. Last night, I showed that it's the most powerful magnetic point on our star. It has faded slightly this morning, but still the strongest on the sun facing Earth today and tomorrow, and even with it well north of the equator, Earth hasn't taken a large quake in a few days and have been well below average for longer. I expect a change within 48 hours and a sharp but brief uptick, likely starting in the far west Pacific. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Alright, and as you may or may not have heard, there was a... 7.8 earthquake in Pakistan, so our prayers and thoughts go out to the people in that area that they remain safe and calm during this time. Uh, things can be tragic like that, and we have to very be very aware of where and how we're acting after these events happen. Especially, you know, we know that they're escalating. We know that there's these things going around the planet. So when they go on, the idea is to remain as calm as possible. I know that it's a challenge when you're in the midst of everything but you know we need to do our best and that's what we're told over and over again the more we can remain calm during these times the more we'll create something that will be much more beneficial to ourselves to the planet all right all right continuing on uh this is david ike talking with credo mutwa credo mutwa is a like a shaman, a Chittahole is what they call him, I believe, and he has a story about the reptilians, something that maybe you haven't heard before, maybe you have heard this interview, but David Icke, who you've heard yesterday talking, talks all about the reptilian agenda, well, he met Credo Mutwa, and they sat down and they did this interview together, it was quite lengthy, three, four, I think maybe six hours for the whole interview, but during the course of it, what was revealed was Credo Mutwa telling a story that David Icke tells, yet the two of them had never met, had never exchanged stories before, yet they were talking about a similar type of things. So I'm going to jump ahead into this video here. I'm skipping ahead for the David Icke's intro, and I'm, he's just going to kind of give the last moment here and then go right to Credo. So let's listen for a little bit what Credo and David have to say. have to listen now. I started out by talking to Credo about the origin of the knowledge that he is about to share with us for the first time in so many cases. Because this is the knowledge that only initiates normally get. But as Credo says, the world needs to know this. And so, this is a unique video. And this is a unique man. And like I say, I asked him first about the origin of the knowledge 
that he's about to pass on. When the white man started destroying our religion, when he started demonizing our gods, when he started ridiculing what we believed in and actually using educated Africans to destroy that ancient African religion, in many parts of Africa, say, our ancient religion went underground. And there were, call them secret societies, all over South Africa and Central Africa and East Africa and West Africa, where this knowledge was, was stored and kept by aging guardians, many, many of whom did not know that in other parts of the land there were other guardians who were doing exactly as they were doing. Now, when I first became a Sangom, I was already, say, a person of education. I had entered school as a child of 14 years, and when I became a Sangom, I was a youth of 16 years. And what, what my aunt and my, grandma, my grandfather, as well as my maternal grandmother, taught me, shook me to the core of my soul. I found that the mission schools had been teaching me lies about my people all along. Missionaries had told us as children that the only light came to Africa with white people. That before the white men came, we black people had no idea about God. We had no belief in a life after death. And that our people were just a race of savages who used to lie around in the sun, womanize, fight and drink beer every day. I was suddenly awakened to the fact that Africa, Africans had in fact been far greater intellectually than the missionaries were, were willing to give them credit for. That like the white men, we had astrology astronomy, we had the surgery. In fact, I found that Zulu surgeons in the early years of the 19th century and the 18th century and even beyond could perform operations which white surgeons were not capable of operating. And the more I learned about my people's the more I wanted to learn. And when my, my initiation under my aunt Maina and my grandfather Zigo had ended, I wanted to know more and more and more. And sometimes I had to pay a ghastly price in order to, to, to gain this knowledge. In one place, here in the, in the northwestern Transvaal, my, my teachers found that I was really uncircumcised. And they told me bluntly that if I wanted to be a member of this secret society, I had to undergo circumcision. And I did. And it was screaming the painful, I assure you, because it was done with a clasp knife 
which somebody must have planted a little bit just to make sure that I got the message. Well, I, I had the same time, but I was, I was asleep at the time, so... <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have that in common. And say, in some places in Southern Africa, if you wanted to learn the secrets of a certain secret society, you had to do dreadful things which I cannot repeat here. And at one time, in Barotsi land, in the west of, of uh, 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 what is today Zambia, the, the, my, my teacher said, look, how far are you willing to go in order to become one of us? I said, I am willing to go anywhere. He looked at me and he said, listen, educated man, we are tired of people like you. White men come amongst us to milk our minds and then to kill us. We want to be sure that we can trust you. And wait, sir. I said, great one, I am willing to do anything. He said, are you? I said, yes. And then, and then, they went into a graveyard, and from there they removed the hand of a corpse, dead two days, and they brought it, and they challenged me to cook it and eat it. I did so. And these were the people who first told me about a race of highly intelligent beings which they called the Chitauri, the Tokas, a race of creatures which look like reptiles who have ruled the world for hundreds, if not thousands of, of years. Through this dreadful act, I was able to gain knowledge which was denied to even the highest Sangomas because they could not, they would not go through the ritual I went through. This is how Secret knowledge is protected in, in Africa. So, and at one time, let me tell you another thing. Again in Barotsi land, on the border between Angola and, and, and North Rhodesia as it was called, I was brought into a hut. And in the hut was a young woman. She was as black as ebony, and her hair was like a huge black cloud on her head. Her teeth had been sharpened in the Barozzi fashion until they looked like those of a reptile. And Mutwa was very puzzled. What's this lady doing here? This I'm supposed to spend several nights in this hut. So what is she? What is she doing here? Now, Credo Mutra being a frightened Zulu, afraid of women but not afraid of wild animals, decided to sleep with his back to the wall, giving the lady a nice clean bed. And on the following day, Credo Mutua was fined 15 pounds by the local chief because I had refused a sacred gift. <laughs> I had been supposed to do something very amazing to this lady to show that I was one of the people. 
<laughs> All right, there you go. So I'm going to leave it right there. There's a lot more to this. You know, I I said that uh, Credo was a Chita Hulite. No, he was he with the reptiles. He was a Sangul, so that was my bad, but he corrected it, so now you understand. But there's three hours and 34 minutes in this particular video. Very interesting, right? Maybe you haven't heard this story before. I would recommend watching the entire piece because it's very insightful and in what he has to say as he continues his story for the next couple of hours. All right, UFO News is up next. Let's do it. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right. Five stories today. Story number one comes to us from Germany. This was from the 18th. New amazing footage of multiple UFOs recorded in the night sky above Wittenberg, Germany on the 18th. What do you think about this video? It says, witness said, these objects were sighted east of Wittenberg, Germany. It was filmed in full zoom and night sight modus. All right. This is what we see there. Very interesting. Are those the objects? They look like the objects, maybe? Whatever it is, pretty fascinating. Um, three minutes for the camera. We UFO know these forms rather. In Belgium, these lights are known as a TRA or TR3B. All right. Sighting number one. Sighting number two takes us to Panama City, Panama. I woke up at 5 a.m. and saw this outside my window. After about five minutes, they split up and flew in different directions, one by one very quickly. I quit filming because I didn't think they were going to move. Okay. So there we go right there. Nice, good sighting. And as he says, they just disappeared at a certain point in time, but he had stopped filming by then. Right, that's Panama City. Next, let's go over to this one in Australia. All right, we got a little map here showing this where this occurred. There we go, right here. This was at the beginning of the month. All right, let's move forward here. There's objects in question. There's the ISS, and that was the unknown object. Right. It's a pretty good size shot. Pretty big object. Whatever that might be. Looks like it has a little triangular shape to it, huh? Alright, very interesting. The link's available. You can check it out, see what you think. Here is a story scientist found evidence of alien life. A balloon was sent to the edge of the atmosphere and picks up organisms that can only have come from space. Alright, this is what was sent up. It says the left image shows an unidentified alien biological complex organism with a sec segmented back connected to a flask-shaped body. On the right, collapsed alien organism with probosks or head of the animal with two nostril like openings and a sphincter like opening at the top. Alright, I guess that would be this right here. It says British scientists believe they have found evidence of life after alien life after sending a balloon to the edge of space. A team of scientists sent a balloon 27 kilometers into the stratosphere and captured small biological organisms that they can say have come from space. The group headed up by astrobiologist Professor Chandra Wickramsang claimed the seeds of life have been transported between planets. By passing meteors, the balloon was carrying sterile microscopic slides which were only exposed to the atmosphere at heights of 27 kilometers. Alright, and this is what went on. It says, when the balloon fell back to Earth, the scientists discovered microscopic aquatic algae on the microscopic slides, which they say can only be alien life forms. All right, and one last, P-51 
piece right here and this is a good question UFOs ET and religion is God an alien are we alone in the universe are we visited are we a visited planet is God an alien Mark Talentire goes in search of extraterrestrial intelligence David Wilkinson is a 50-year-old married Methodist minister living in sleepy Caraville, Durham City in the United Kingdom, an unlikely candidate then you might say for an alien hunter. But there's more to Reverend Professor Wilkinson than a cler clerical collar, as well as being a Christian theologian and a principal of Durham University, St. John College. He's a renowned astrophysicist and a long-term enthusiast of UFOs and Little Green Men. Hence his new book, Science, Religion, and the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Whenever I give a talk about cosmology, whether it's from the perspective of just science or what that means for religious faith, one question I can guarantee will be asked. He says from his college office, still filled with boxes following a summer relocation, do I believe in life elsewhere in the universe? And the implication is, what would that mean for our current models of science and religious faith? It's a topic that's been addressing in his, he's been addressing in his books, articles, and talks for more than a decade, but he's finally turned to writing his book last year, it turns out a hugely exciting time for the field. Until 1995, the only planets we knew of were those orbiting the sun. Now we have spotted more than 900 others known as extrasolar planets, and more are being identified all the time. Professor Wilkinson even has an app on his mobile phone which alerts him to every new discovery. If every star has planets around it, and we're beginning to think that most do, he says, there are a hundred billion stars and a hundred billion galaxies. Surely, there must be another planet like earth like planet out there and surely there must be other life for an academic who will over the course of our interview use the phrase open mind in reference to himself on at least three occasions is pretty bold statement for professor wilkinson it's a matter of probability and the existence of extrasolar planets increase the chance of sustainability but if aliens exist you might say why aren't they here good question in the jargon, it's known as the Fermi Paradox, named after post-war Italian physicist Enrico Fermi. Professor Wilkinson accepts its strong argument. We've been searching for evidence of other life forms for more than 50 years, and E.T., I'm afraid, hasn't phoned home yet at all, he says. But this is where the entirely baffling sides of the universe comes into play. Even a message from the Andromeda Galaxy, the nearest spiral galaxy to our own Milky Way, would take several million years to reach us, meaning intelligent life would have had to have existed long ago to send it. It's also possible to say that some life existed elsewhere, but in very simple form, bacteria, for example. It's a long way for an amoeba to an accountant, Professor Wilkinson says. I want to keep an open mind. But if aliens did exist, what would that mean for Christian beliefs? Well, there are two questions there. Professor Wilkinson says where the existence of aliens would undercut the Christian belief that humans are special and if aliens existed, what the, would that mean for Jesus? Well, in the former, Professor Wilkinson is very relaxed. It was the Greeks who said humans were the center of the universe, he explains. Christians adopted that, but we don't have to be the center of the universe to be special. We can be special because of the gift of relationship with God. On the latter, while some 20th century theologians argue that forgiveness the forgiveness Christians see in Jesus is available to people of all planets, opening up the intriguing concept of Christians as cosmic missionaries. Others have said aliens might have their own Jesus figure. Maybe the only way we know what God has done is if the little green men and women arrive and have some kind of conversation, Professor Wilkinson says. I'm prepared to hold an open mind. There's a lot more to the article. But it's a big question, you know, what's going to happen with all of this? With what people believe. I got, a f I got a simple solution, a simple way to remember this. God made the aliens. God made everyone. God made the aliens. Let's all get along. You see, I believe that we're all the same. From universe to universe, from planet to planet, we're all the same. We're all created by the same creator. We're just confused along the way about what's going on, and so that's the big problem. Ultimately, what we're going to find out is the creator is much bigger and once we experience this extraterrestrial presence and we realize that they are not God that they are just beings that were created by the creator then we'll expand our concept of what God is to even bigger than it is right now for many individuals because many limit it to to something smaller well 
God becomes much bigger in this whole picture. It's not anything to be afraid of. It's something to be looking forward to because it's part of who we are. It's part of our experience of expansion to go and meet our brothers and sisters in space, to meet the other creations that the great creator has made. All right, that's our UFO news for today. I'll be right back. I've got more. What if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation? Would you really want to know? These are big questions, but these questions deserve answers. It's time to demand the truth. People should not be afraid of their governments. Government should be afraid of All right, continuing on. So we have this program out there called Obamacare. Well, Obama doesn't even seem to be able to take care of himself, so it's kind of a joke that we have this insurance that's called Obamacare. What's even more of a joke is that if we look into the records of the president, the alleged president, and his wife, we see that they used to have pr uh, license to practice law. But according to a database from Chicago about you know judicial database, neither one of them have a law license. They both lost them. It is said that the reason that Miss Obama lost her license was for insurance fraud. Well, I'm able to kind of put two and two together and I see, okay, here's a woman involved with insurance fraud, had her license taken away from her. Now her last name is Obama, right? Because she's, we're told she's married, so her last name is Obama. And we have this insurance called Obamacare. So we have a woman who has the last name that is the same name of this insurance. So she is definitely connected in there. We have to imagine that she has some sort of influence with her husband that she's involved. So one of the, one of the names, one of the people involved in the Obamacare has a history of insurance fraud. Doesn't it seem kind of strange that we should have someone who had a history of insurance fraud involved with this? Well, maybe that's why we have a lot of congressmen and a lot of people that are higher up don't want to have this sort of program. They don't want to have Obamacare. They want to force it on the people, but they themselves don't want it. Seems kind of backwards. Doesn't make sense. Well, this is Rand Paul introducing an article. It says, Rand Paul to introduce amendment outlawing Obamacare exemptions for government employees. Good. They should have to accept it because maybe... If they realize that they have to accept it like everyone else, maybe they'll actually say this is a really bad idea. Senator Rand Paul has announced that he intends to introduce a constitutional amendment that would force federal employees off taxpayer-funded personal health care plans and onto Obamacare health insurance. Appearing on Fox News this morning, Paul argued that as Obama's health care law goes into effect, federal workers should be made to purchase Affordable Care Act exchanges instead of getting special treatment via subsidies. I think Congress should never exempt themselves from a law, Paul said. But then again, I think John Roberts, who loves Obamacare so much, he should get it. Right now, he's getting a federal employee subsidy. He's not part of Obamacare. He makes the rest of America, though, I think, convoluted constitutional logic. He makes us get Obamacare, but he's exempt, the senator added. Roberts voted to uphold the constitutionality of Obamacare when it went before the Supreme Court last year. Since that time, some within Congress have pushed for an exemption for representatives and their staffers from Obamacare. Last month, the Office of Personal Management announced that it would provide a subsidy of about 75% of the cost for the health care for the members and staff. Many have denounced the move, given, given that it essentially exempts members of Congress and their staff from the health care law. So I have an amendment that I will introduce that says all the federal, employment, in federal government gets in. Obamacare, including federal employees that are including John Roberts. When Fox and Friends presenter Brian Kilmeade noted that forcing government workers onto Obamacare would mean a rise in premiums for staffers, Paul replied, I'm not excited about doing that to staff for federal employees, but if the president thinks Obamacare is a good idea, and if John Roberts thinks he can twist the Constitution to make Obamacare constitutional, he ought to get it. I support any effort to make all laws applicable to Congress that we passed, Paul said, adding that it would save taxpayers billions of dollars. There's more to the article here, but it makes sense. Okay, If we have a Congress 
if we have a justice of the Supreme Court all talking about how wonderful Obamacare is, then they should have it. They shouldn't be exempt. And if they're exempt, it's because they find fault with the program itself. And since so many are finding fault with it, we have to wonder why would they then want to push it upon the American people? Doesn't make sense. So either Congress should have to get this, and Judge Roberts should have, John Roberts should have to get this, or no one should have to. There shouldn't be any exemptions. We either all have to get jackass care, or we don't get jackass care. I mean Obamacare, sorry. It's easy to inter interchange the words, because he is a donkey, a Democrat donkey, so I'm not out of line in saying he's a jackass, right? Um, so, jackass care coming our way. We'll see what happens there, but I think uh, Congress and, and John Roberts should have to get this just like everybody else supposedly have to. But the best thing would be if we just get rid of it, because remember, there's someone who's part of it, a last name Obama, in the White House who has her law license taken away because of insurance fraud. Ding, ding, ding. There's a clue, folks. Insurance fraud. We should kind of realize we're being duped again. Some people like to be duped, I guess. All right, uh, you've heard about Common Core, one of these, another one of these things brought about by the president's, the brilliance of this administration. Well, there's complaints about it. I don't know if you saw the video, but there was a video of a parent who stood up at a meeting talking about this, and he was pulled out of the meeting rather rudely and rather roughly, I might say, by security there. This guy was speaking up. And that's what's happening more and more around the country. People are speaking up about the dumb things that this man in office is doing to this country. And when they speak up, people that are supporters of this man, blind supporters of this man, they're going ahead and they're enforcing policies that they don't even understand is violations of the Constitution, violations of persons, personal rights. And it's a shame that we have so many people that are so willing to do that. Well... Here's a video. It's called The Truth About Common Core. Very good sense. Listen to this. It makes a lot of sense. I went to public school. In this video, me are going to address the problems that is in the public school and how to make education gooder. The quality of public education has been going like this especially over the past couple of decades. There's a lot of reasons for the decline, but a big reason is the federal government is increasingly taking control over schools. Centralizing education and one-size-fits-all policies don't work. No child left behind left everyone behind. Now we have Common Core, which is uniform national curriculum standards. Remember that mean principal on TV sitcoms? This will go down on your permanent record. Well, that permanent record is now real. There's a huge new student tracking database as part of Common Core. Huge violation of privacy, creepy big brother, data mining. I know what some of you are thinking. But it's actually a well-known part of Common Core. The database would not just include relevant academic information, such as test scores. It could include information on a student's religion, political affiliation, blood type, overall health status, sexual orientation, and more. And get this, it could track a student's appreciation for diversity and cultural awareness. Let's say six-year-old little Susie likes to repeat things she hears her older brother's friends say. Tommy pushed me off the monkey bars. He's a Now Susie, that wasn't very politically correct of you, was it? This is going near permanent record and your potential future employers will be able to read this. I mean, come on. Little kids, they say and repeat things they don't understand all the time. Don't let their un-PC inappropriate comments they made when they were in first grade haunt them forever. Another problem with Common Core is this kids aren't allowed to fail mentality. We have to coddle them. It might hurt their feelings. Everyone is a special snowflake. Mathematics under Common Core is pretty messed up. Let's say a kid writes 2 plus 2 equals 5 on his test. As long as he can explain how he arrived at that wrong answer, then that's just fine. This 
kids are too precious to fail mentality has got to go. Is this how to prepare kids for the real world? I mean, not everyone can be a politically connected Wall Street banker. There are a lot of problems with Common Core. I don't even have time to go into most of them. But a step in the right direction would be to give local communities, teachers, parents control over their schools so they can design curriculums and standards to best meet the needs of their students and get the federal government out of education. All right, good advice, right? And with kids getting dumber in the schools is it no wonder that some of these conspiracies out there are just considered that because look at the science that has gone into the the investigation of 9-11 it's amazing the amazing amount of research that is out there of physics mathematics tons of of diagrams and tests that were done but if the kids nowadays are too dumb to be able to read those results they're not going to make any sense to them. They're going to laugh at them. If kids these days can, can be taught that a fire can bring a whole building down and believe that, man, we're, we're in a bad place. We're in a really bad place. So this is what happens when you get administrators in government that are out of control. Now, it's not just Obama. Bush was also to blame. Because Bush is a puppet just like Obama. They're all puppets. Puppets for someone behind the scenes who are pulling the strings. Not for this, just for this country, but for others. We need to really wake up, folks. I know I say that every single day. But every single day we hear stupid stories of things that are going on. People aren't waking up. People are getting dumber, it seems. People are becoming more afraid. All the while, the man in the White House, who has a transparent record of of uh, his background so we know who he is right wrong he spent millions of dollars to keep it closed we got this guy tearing the country apart he's a Muslim Barry Satoro is his name and yet people still blindly follow him and his wife that has insurance fraud in her background not to mention the fact you know why he doesn't have his law license because he lied See, when he was asked if he ever used a name other than Barack Obama, he said no. And then it was discovered that when he was adopted, he used the name Barry Satoro. And guess what? They said he lied and he had to turn in his law license before they took it away. Two people that have backgrounds in corruption, and yet they're in the White House. Because too many people in America blindly voted for them because they got caught up in all the nonsense. All of the nonsense. You know, a lot of people, uh, I know a lot of people voted just because of the color of his skin. Caught up that he's a black man. Well, according to the biblical standards, guess what? According to biblical standards, you're determined the color of your skin according to your parents. Okay? His mom was white. That means Obama technically is white with a black father. He's a white man that has some black in him. He's not a black man, not according to the standards that out there. So a lot of people were fooled by the color of his skin and told that this was a man that represented them. But he doesn't represent them. He doesn't represent blacks. He doesn't represent whites. He doesn't represent Christians. He doesn't represent Americans. This man across the board is a deceitful liar, just like all of the others that have come before him, just a puppet. And yet people keep believing. Time to open your eyes, folks. Time to open your eyes if they're not already open. All right, we're going to switch gears from all of that nonsense because we know they lie and I get tired of talking about all that nonsense. We're going to go to something a little more positive. Yesterday I introduced you to this site, Angel Numbers. I want to go over a little bit more here on this site. It's a great site. Check it out. Uh sacred scribes angel numbers dot blogspot dot com and I want to take you to this page here vibrations of the numbers zero through one all right and here this is our numerology so again you'll see similarities in what we talked about zero is the alpha the beginning and the omega as is there are no beginning no end all is infinite the ancients proclaimed that the God force is a circle whose center is everywhere and his circumference is nowhere. So it's God, zero. Then we go to the one, 
One resonates with the vibrations and the attitudes of the new beginnings, creation, independence. Uh, two resonates with the vibrations of service and duty, balance and harmony. Three resonates with the energies of optimism and joy, inspiration, creativity. Four with vibrations of, of uh, practical, practicality, organization. Five with influence, personal freedom, unconventional individualism. Six is vibrations and energies of unconditional love, balance, and harmony. Seven, collective consciousness, faith, spirituality. Eight, vibrations of authority, personal power, self confidence, abundance. Nine is universal love eternity, faith, universal spiritual laws. Okay, and then 10, we go up to the next level. 10 reduces to a 1, and then we go back to the 1, because we got the 1 and the 0. And again, if you remember all of this numerology we talked about uh, the week before last, this is just a refresher on all of that, right? And then if you go over to the number sequences, you can go here and you can find out a little bit more about what all these different mixed number sequences are. I'm deciphering your angel number messages and meanings. Look at all the numbers individually as well as the total and trust your own intuition. So for example, as part of working out what your angel number or repetitive number sequence may mean to you has to do with your own intuition and higher wisdom. If a meaning and or a message resonates with your soul, you instinctively know it. If it does not, you will also know that. Angel numbers can appear in any sequence and often represent as mixed numbers. Examples are 4284, 1063, 5839, 1386, etc. The combinations are endless. These numbers can be looked at in a few different ways. Often the number of sequences is the key to the message. For example, a sequence of 1210 one, can be viewed as 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0, which equals 4. In this instance, the number 4 is the vibration of your angel message. Alright, and then you can go here, you got the index listing of all kind of number patterns and sequences they are and then we've got how to uh, read angel numbers it says our spirit guides and our guardian angels guide us through our thoughts our emotions and insights and our actions our guardians show us the signs of as a means of subtlety getting our attention in order for them to be able to guide us one way the angels can direct attract our attention by showing us physical signs such as repeating number sequences which can appear in all manner of places numbers are all around us in everyday lives so it's not difficult for the angels to arrange them in a fashion that we take notice alright so check out this site all about angel numbers it's, uh, Joanne Sacred Scribes the site is sacred sacred scribes angel numbers dot blogspot dot com the links available check it out really cool site lots of great information here because the information and in the in the communication of the universe takes place with us all the time and the more we're able to understand what these meanings are the better it is now everything around us is energy and we use and we look at this energy we look at these numbers as a way of interpreting this energy to see what it means and we can use energy in many different ways and one of the things that we have the ability to do is to use energy to heal ourselves to heal others this is a good article on that subject ancient secrets the truth about energy healing energy is all around us right actually we are energy and when we need to heal our bodies we do so by applying the right energy healing techniques to raise our vibration to correspond with the energy of well-being okay admittedly that's a bit out there given the tech teachings of modern medicine that focus on alleviating physical and psychological symptoms without addressing the true cause of the ailments the cause being an overabundance of low vibrating energy in the individual's energy field or imbalances in that field energy healing has been used by ancient healers since the dawn of man modern science is finally catching up thanks to the quantum theory and recognizing that energy is medicine modern medicine considers energy healing to be a new field of study but even in modern med medicine energy has been used unwittingly for healing for example changing a patient's mindset to a shift in the patient's energy good doctors even those absolutely convinced that a physical approach to healing is the only reliable treatment protocol 
recognize the importance of a patient's mindset in promoting healing. Virtually every ancient society across the globe has used or continued to use energy healing. Ancient healers knew that there was more healing that fixes wounds or relieving fevers. They understood the thoughts and the visible threats caused them or contributed to psychological and physical ailments. They knew how to take healing out of the realm of the physical and into the psychological and spiritual dimensions. And how it works, it says thoughts are energy, emotions are energy, and these affect your state of health. You choose your thoughts and your emotions, and so you create your own health. The quality of your thoughts matters when negative energy in the form of thoughts and emotions becomes dominant in our energy field it will absolutely manifest in different type of physiological or psychological problems and it says similar energies attract each other if you are vibrating at a predominantly negative frequency it will attract corresponding negative energy alright so good article there's lots of different types of energy out there from Reiki energy to the Hawaiian, Hawaiian energy to different type of shamanistic Native American type healing energies they're all the same ways of working with energy to help provide healing. It's pretty simple. Okay, we all have the ability. You can take your hands together, rub your hands together, and you can feel in your hands coming from your palms, you will feel an energy that's there. And you can take this energy and you can put it at different places on your body and feel. You can do it on others. It's and the more you practice with it, the more you can bring your energy out. And you can use your energy to help others. That's why we work to strengthen our energy fields, because this is what's valuable. This energy field, this body, and what we have is more valuable than any of the money or anything on this planet. And we can use this to help each other, to heal each other. There hasn't always been modern medicine around. People used to heal each other in different ways. Look at all the stories we know of, of Jesus and his healings. Energy healings, very important. All right, Book of Revelation. Today we are up to chapter 17. Here we go. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon the many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have combined, for, committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit on a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast with car that carried her, which hath the seven heads and the ten horns. And the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written into the book of life from their foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is and is not and yet is and here is the mind which hath wisdom these seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth and there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast was, and is not, even he is the eighth of the eighth, the seventh, and goes into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which are received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, they shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords, King of kings, and they that are with him are called the chosen, his faithful. And he saith unto them, The waters which thou sawest, where the whole horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, 
and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. All right, that is Revelation. Again, I think it's kind of synchronistic, or we'll just say a coincidence, that in the book of Revelations, which depicts what we believe is to be the end times, how it uses the phrase like abomination, it just, to hear the phrase abomination, knowing we have a president named Obama, and the people talking about the abomination that he has created, to me, it doesn't seem like a coincidence. To me, it just seems like another piece of the puzzle that we should be paying attention to. All right, here's the message. Galactic Federation of Light, Hilarion. Hilarion's Weekly Message. September 21st to 28th, 2013, by Marlene Swetla Shaw. Beloved ones, in the atmosphere around you, there is a feeling of expectancy, of anticipation for something greater to appear before your very eyes that will validate the shifts that have taken place within you. Dear ones, we say look within yourselves, for the greatest shifts that have occurred and will occur are taking place within people's consciousness. There have been many moments of revelation and validation for each of you. It behooves you all to become more observant of the changes within your own thought processes to understand the enormity of what is now happening within the hearts of all humanity. Underlying all the outer happenings upon your planet there is a new energy and that new energy is the move towards unity in all things and in all ways. The world's people are beginning to discover that it is indeed, a small world. It has started to sink into people's awareness that it is very important for each person to make their choice and take their stand for all that is right and good. This is something that each soul knows inherently within their hearts and souls. All that needs to be done is to make claim to a higher way of being and the way before each person will clear, each crooked place will straighten, each challenge met as if by magic. It is imperative that each person start their day aligning to the light and to spend a few moments several times throughout their day reaffirming that intention. This reinforces your motivation to continue to walk in the light. Say these affirmations out loud, if it is possible, with great authority, for this further cements the light to you. See a great column of light around you at all times and know that you walk in peace and safety. Hold your light, dear ones, whenever you hear your news media project gloom and doom through the airwaves. Remind yourselves that it is but an illusion and that you will not give your creative energy to these ideas and thoughts. Focus always on the light that you are and that you hold. This light has grown in intensity and brilliance beyond your imagining and this is now what you are manifesting in the world around you. You do not have to prove anything to anyone because you know who you are and that is sufficient. Strive to bring more of your divine essence into your auric field and into your heart. The human heart has the capacity to expand to great levels and this is your task in the new few months. Believe in your own ability to create the changes you desire in your world by simply being the light that you are. Be unswerving in your peaceful intentions and treat others with the greatest kindest and respect. Remember how it was for you during your awakening and how powerful the energies are that must be assimilated and fully integrated. This is what your brothers and sisters, all your loved ones are now experiencing and they need your patience, support and encouragement. They need your peaceful calm and your confidence that all is well. They need to know that the process that they are going through is one that everyone on earth must go through and that they will make it through. This is what you have been training for as you struggled mightily to overcome the temptations of duality of this plane of existence. You have made the grade, you have graduated, and now it is time to use your wisdom and experience to make a difference in the lives and challenges of the people around you. By the light that you are, they shall know you and seek you out. Be ready to serve the Divine in any way that you are called during these times. Take time to be still and go within. Listen to the voice of your greater self as it moves into position at the helm and follow its promptings. Trust that within you lies the greatest knowledge and wisdom, that this has always lain hidden in the depths of your being for just these times and allow your brilliant light to shine. Until next week. I am Hylorion. Alright, very nice. So let's go check out our angel message for today. And then jump into our meditation. Here we go. Angel message for today says, Now is your time 
put your own needs first. This is not selfishness. It's honoring your own life's path. All right, very nice message. Put your needs first. It's not selfishness. You're just honoring your own life's path. Very important because we have to take time out to honor who we are, what we're about. And it's not a selfish thing to do that. You know, know thyself. It's one of the old, old things. And we have to know ourselves first and foremost. So let's go into our meditation here. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Take another deep breath. And exhale again. All right, let's imagine that you are standing, just looking out into space. And as you do, as you're just looking out into space, you find that you step outside of yourself. So you're looking at your own reflection. And as you are looking at yourself, you're able to see places in your body where healing is needed. And so you take your hands and you rub your hands together to generate some heat from your palms. And then you go ahead and you take your hands and you place them over the places on the body where you see these dark energies of this reflection standing in front of you. Any place that needs healing. And your reflection is doing exactly the same thing to you. And as you feel this exchange of energy, the two bodies begin to merge into one. And you realize that you don't have to be standing outside of yourself to heal yourself that that healer is inside of you at all times. And so you imagine as you're standing there healing and energizing the places in your body that need healing energy sent to them. Imagine the light pouring down through the crown chakra, the white light pouring down entering the crown chakra. Imagine the color of violet then continuing as the light flows down further and when it gets to the next chakra that goes from violet to indigo right between the two eyes and the light continues to go down and as this goes down it fills your body with warmth and it heals all of the areas it passes and the light continues down to the throat where we see the color blue and the healing energy goes through to help heal the throat and the energy continues down into the heart and there you imagine the color green and from there the energy continues down from the heart chakra just below the rib cage imagine the color yellow this is our intellectual body and just imagine the energy is going to healing our minds and the energy goes down further imagine the color orange right at the belly button and imagine the energy going and healing the emotional body and the energy continues on further yet down to the root chakra. Imagine the color red. Imagine our physical body being healed. And the energy continues down into the earth. And just allow yourself to feel for a moment all of this healing energy coursing through your body. Feel it going into the areas that need attention and energizing those areas. And now from your heart chakra, I want you just to imagine sending love to yourself. Send this love to yourself. And know that by sending love to yourself and loving yourself, the universe is reflecting that exa exact example. And now we go and we send love from ourselves. We send it out into the universe as well. To share with each and every individual upon this planet. So let our subconscious mind continue on the journey of sending out love. And thinking healing thoughts as we go throughout this day. And let's bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. 
Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale. And open your eyes. There you have it, my friends. That's it for today. Thank you very much for being here. I will be back tomorrow with more news and information. Keep, th keep thinking those healing thoughts. Keep thinking positivity. I know there's a lot of craziness in the world, but we can deal with it. We can overcome this. We just have to stay focused and stay positive. That's it. Focused and positive. And everything will work itself out. I'll be back tomorrow with more news and information. Have an awesome day. Talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here. Come into our circle, great spirit. Fill our souls with peace.